My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. This episode is brought to you by La Quinta by Window. Your work can take you all over the place, like Texas. You've never been, but it's going to be great because you're staying at La Quinta by Wyndham. Their free bright side breakfast will give you energy for the day ahead. And after, you can unwind using their free high-speed Wi-Fi. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book your stay today at LQ.com. This is Optimal Living Daily. When you feel stuck in life, this tip will help you move forward by Jennifer of simplyfiercely.com, and I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick. We're gonna get right to our next article as we optimize your life. When you feel stuck in life, this tip will help you move forward, by Jennifer of simplyfiercely.com. When my daughter was two, she suddenly went through a phase where she would scream at bedtime unless my husband or I sat with her until she fell asleep. Of course, I'm pretty sure this is normal for a lot of kids, so we didn't think much of it. Instead, we just sat there every night and waited, trapped on the floor in the dark. Yes, it was a bit frustrating to be stuck, but that's just life, right? Months passed, and nothing changed. Then one night, I had to escape to use the toilet. I left the door open and went to the bathroom. And when I came back, she was sleeping. We quickly realized that she didn't need us sitting there every night, at least not anymore. She just wanted to fall asleep with the door open. We never had to sit with her at bedtime again. Now, I don't know when this shift happened. Maybe if I had tried to leave the night before, she would have cried for me to come back, but maybe not. Maybe if I had tried something different earlier, instead of just assuming she still needed us, we could have saved ourselves months of long, boring evenings on the floor. I'm not telling you this to share parenting advice. Trust me, if there's one thing I'll never write about on the internet, it's kids and sleep. But I can't help but feel that there is a lesson here for everyone. In what ways are you stuck in a toddler's bedroom wasting your precious time and energy when really you could just get up and walk out the door? Why do we feel stuck? There are many reasons we feel stuck in life and I'm not here to deny the reality of anyone's circumstance. There are bills to pay, people to care for, and everything in between. Sometimes our responsibilities can leave us feeling stuck and overwhelmed by life. But at the same time, it's also true that we keep ourselves stuck by making assumptions about what is or isn't possible. Let's take your to-do list, for example. There are probably a lot of things that you have to do, but do you really? In a culture where on some level we take pride in how much we can juggle, This can be a loaded question. I know that if someone had asked me this 15 years ago, I would have responded defensively, you don't know me and you don't know how much I have to deal with. And that's true, but if I'm honest and I reflect on my past without the resentment or desperation I used to feel about proving myself, that I can see that this attitude was holding me back. I was so unbelievably stubborn and I didn't want to admit that I was keeping myself stuck by making things harder than they needed to be how to get unstuck. So what should I have done instead? Ask questions and challenge assumptions. Sometimes we feel stuck in life because we're weighed down by chains, never realizing that we already hold the key to freedom. Think about it. Is it possible that some of the things on your to-do list were important once, but they're just not necessary anymore? If we look back at the story about my daughter's sleep, I'm sure that she did need me to stay with her that first night, but at some point, it changed. When? I don't know, because I never challenged what I accepted to be true. I just kept doing the same thing every night because at that moment, it felt easier. And to be clear, that's okay sometimes. We can and should choose to do what's easier when it's what we need to survive. But eventually, the tides shift. We feel stuck and frustrated but unless we question what has become habitual or routine, we'll never know what else is possible. So ask yourself, 
What's on your to-do list that doesn't need to be there? What are you afraid to do because you've failed in the past? What are you doing simply because it's what you've always done? What are you chasing because it's what everyone else is doing? How is all of this eating away at your time and energy holding you back from doing the things you most want to be doing with your life? And if you don't know what you wanna be doing, is it possible that you're just too busy to figure it out? Of course, not everything is up for debate. There's a lot on your to-do list that genuinely belongs there, but how can you know for sure if you don't challenge your assumptions? And it's not just your to-do list. Think about your relationships, boundaries, home, finances, and so much more. In what ways are you stuck only because you haven't tried to change? I've spent so many years of my life stuck, stuck in relationships, stuck in jobs I hated, stuck in debt, stuck drowning in my clutter because I assumed that change would be too hard. I used to tell myself, I've made my bed and now I've got to sleep in it. But time and again, life would push me to the limits and I learned that when you're backed in a corner, you leap even when you have no faith that things will work out. The job I couldn't quit because I'd never find anything better, the relationship I couldn't end because it would hurt too many people, the compulsive shopping habit I couldn't change because it was just too hard. It wasn't easy or quick, but eventually I proved all of my assumptions wrong. And while I trust the timing of my life and try to live without regrets, I can't help but wonder what would have happened if I had acted earlier. Instead of staying stuck in my fears and doubts for so long, maybe all I had to do was get up and walk out the door. Moving forward. I believe that life comes in seasons and some are harder than others. Sometimes we just need to be patient, like when we're caring for loved ones or just starting out with our careers. We feel stuck because we want to be somewhere else, but it's just not time yet. But other times a season has ended and another is waiting, but you'll never know unless you get up and test the waters. Challenge your assumptions, and if it feels hard, start small. Cross things off your to-do list without actually doing it. Declutter a closet, even if you might need things later. Set a firm boundary that you've been too afraid to ask for. Apply for a job that you don't think you're qualified for. Take a nap when you should be doing something else. Pick up a paintbrush, even if you're not creative. Decline an engagement that you don't want to attend. Maybe it won't go well, and then you'll deal with the fallout, or maybe you'll find that this is your chance to get unstuck and finally move forward. You'll never know unless you try. You just listened to the post titled, When You Feel Stuck in Life, This Tip Will Help You Move Forward by Jennifer of simplyfiercely.com and I'll be right back with my commentary. Good taste is easy to spot, but hard to pin down. You know it when you see it. With your car, You want something sophisticated and daring, yet classic, approachable, but with an air of opulence. That's where the Range Rover Evoque comes in. The Range Rover Evoque is charisma in motion, art and craft in equal measure. Its exterior is a quietly bold expression of Range Rover DNA with a floating roof, continuous waistline, and three-dimensional grille that give it a captivating character. Inside, you'll find a calm, minimalist cabin, anchored by a tactile gear shifter where clean lines, sumptuous materials, and advanced technology come together. Make a statement in the Range Rover Evoque. This elegant SUV elevates every drive, offering a new dimension of refinement and luxury. Whether you prefer a modern aesthetic or a warmer, authentic appearance, the Evoque's interior can be tailored to your taste. Ready to experience sophisticated design and premium materials in motion? Explore the Range Rover Evoke at LandRoverUSA.com. Making everyone happy on vacation isn't easy, but you know what is? Going to Aruba. All you have to do is walk out your door to find pristine pools, relaxing white sand beaches, and an island teeming with outdoor activities that'll put a smile on any face. You won't just feel great, you'll all feel great, filled with a calmer, more peaceful vibe that radiates Aruba's warmth. And the best part is, it never fades. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your family trip at aruba.com. Thank you to Jennifer. So I've been narrating an article every day and reading this stuff for many years. It's quite a long time. And occasionally someone will say something like, 
you've been reading this stuff for so long. What's the main takeaway or one thing you would say could have the most positive impact on someone's life? Now, there definitely isn't one, and that's always my answer. Plus, everyone's different, and what you need to hear is likely very different than what I need to hear, also why I share as many different perspectives as possible on this show. But what Jennifer talked about in this post would definitely be up there in like the top five main themes that I think people in general should take away, and that is ask questions and challenge assumptions. That's not to say break rules and laws or be a rebel, but it means thinking critically about assumptions in life. Can you really only retire after 65 years old? Do you need to live where you currently live? Do you need a car? Do you need that job and that life? There's so many things in life that we simply get used to that we never even question if it should still be part of our lives. In my own life, it was having a nine to five job, working for someone else. Now, by no means was it easy to turn this random idea of podcasting into a full-time job to replace my previous salary, but it did take questioning my day-to-day life to really figure out that what I truly wanted was to do extra work on the side until I reached a point where I believed that I had enough to be able to quit my job and work on something else full-time for myself which eventually turned into what you're hearing today. But many of us, and even myself, at a different period in life, won't, or wouldn't have, come to that conclusion. It really takes a lot of reflection and questioning things that most people don't question at all. That'd be one takeaway of many that I think is critical. So question those assumptions this weekend. Have a great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.